Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to react to you and roast my first ever rack hair. So obviously I often sit here and give you guys advice about what you could do to improve your rack hair, but I think it's really important to acknowledge that I started somewhere, I made mistakes, I had to make improvements as well, and I wanted to share that in today's video. Before we get started though, I quickly just wanted to show you guys that my merch has turned up and I'm super happy with it. I've been wearing it pretty much ever since. If you guys would also like to have merch with this design on, the link to my Teespring store is in the description. We've got t-shirts, hoodies, tote bags, tank tops, phone cases, mugs, pretty much anything you'd want a design on has got it over on the Teespring store, so the link to that is in the description. I think it's super important to start conversations with people about how amazing rats can be as pets, because unfortunately there still is a massive stigma around keeping them, and you guys can also support the channel in the process if you want to. So the link to my Teespring is in the description. Don't forget also if you do pick anything up to tag me in your pictures on Instagram or Twitter. I'd love to also see you guys wearing them too. So when it comes to my first initial rat care, my first two rats were called Rolo and Scampi. They still have a very special place in my heart. And if you've been watching me since then, thank you for sticking around, but I definitely made a couple of mistakes with their care. Now I'm not talking anything serious like keeping rats in tanks or anything like that. Thankfully I did do my research. I know unfortunately people still make those common mistakes today, but those were a lot more common 10, 15 years ago. Luckily I've not been keeping rats that long to make common mistakes when there wasn't as much information out there. I did do my research, I was googling for months before I got the rats, but there's only so much research you can do before you get them, and then once you have got them, you kind of learn what works and what doesn't work, and you carry on researching throughout their life. So there's definitely a couple of mistakes I made with their initial setup, and then obviously I joined things like forums and Facebook groups, and I learned a lot more information after I got them. So if we take a look at the first ever picture I took of their cage setup, I had this done months and months before I even got them. I was really prepared in that sense, I had everything ready, but this is the cage I started with, this is the fur class fur rat, and it's not a bad cage, some people would class this as the minimum, this is technically big enough for two rats, but I don't think I would ever go back to using this, just from personal experience. Pretty soon on I realised this wasn't going to be big enough for them, and it didn't provide them with enough space, so I would never personally use this again long term. Neither of them lived in there, Scampi didn't live very long unfortunately, but Rolo did not live in there for his whole entire life. I did eventually upgrade him, but I still have this exact cage, but I only use it when I get new baby rats, and then obviously they go into the big cage, but I've still got this exact cage, and I would never really use it for this kind of purpose again. So if we take a look at the actual cage setup itself, the first thing that I'm personally noticing and is really bothering me is the fact that I use back to nature on the whole base of the cage. Now this isn't a dangerous bedding, it's not a bad bedding, it's actually a really good bedding to use in your litter trays, but I was using it in the litter tray and also in the whole base of the cage, which I now know is not a good idea. One, because it is so expensive, it's about £13.99 on Amazon, and I think it would probably take about three cage cleans to use the whole bag up, which is quite expensive for bedding, so that's the first thing. Secondly, if you know anything about trying to litter train rats, you do want to have separate beddings in the main part of the cage and also in the litter tray. You want to use the kind of pellet paper beddings in the litter tray because they're so absorbent for their pee, and you do want a looser, easier bedding to dig with and forage in, which at this point I didn't really know too much about that, which is why I chose to use it. You do want a more looser bedding like cardboard, or hemp or something like that, they can easily move and dig because the paper pellets are quite heavy, so that's the first mistake I can spot. Secondly, the litter tray itself, I've obviously done enough research to know that having a pea rock is a good idea to encourage them, I've obviously found that information at some point, but I still have this exact litter tray, I don't use the hooded bit, but I still have the blue bit which clips onto the cage. This is a really good litter tray, most of the things that come with it you don't need to use or you shouldn't use, the mesh grid itself, I don't recommend using this. If you have a litter tray that comes with that, just take it off. I found pretty early on that using this was super annoying because they would kind of poop on the grate and then I'd have to like pressure wash it to get the poop off and it just was disgusting. So I don't recommend doing that. I would just take the grate off and I'd chuck that away pretty quickly. The second thing I can spot, which is a rookie error on my part, is the use of the shelf that comes with the fur class cage. These are absolute pee magnets, as nice as they look. My rats definitely started peeing on this pretty much straight away. They love peeing in corners and they love peeing on cheap plastic. 
and they peed on this and I had to wipe it every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, which was very annoying. So I would just take this out if I was redoing this cage setup. I wouldn't even bother with the shelf. So I would recommend if you've got shelves like this in your cage, whether they're metal or plastic, any shelf that's not covered and you're having major issues with odour, just take them out, it's not worth it, it's not worth the hassle of wiping them multiple times a day because they will and they do pee on them and it's just not worth the effort. Also at the front of the picture there's a tiny green cat ball. I bought these for them thinking they play with them. They never did, these were a waste of money but I will be hopefully repurposing them very soon but the rats never showed any interest and I just took them out pretty quick. Moving on to this picture, this is their first ever foraging toy. This was pretty soon after I got them, and I don't ever remember getting them foraging toys this early on, but I must have done. I've still got this foraging toy, I love this. I'll link it in the description if I can still find it on the website. But this is their first ever foraging toy, and I'm glad I actually gave them some sort of enrichment because I just felt like I didn't give them any for about six months, but apparently I did, so that's good. And then we have Brolo playing with his foraging ball. I don't have this anymore, they destroyed it pretty early on. But this was good, you could change the size of the holes and hide treats in. I don't have any memory of giving them foraging toys this early on, but I must have done, so at least I did that. Looking at this picture, one thing I kind of regret is just buying cheap hammocks from eBay. This did not last long, I was constantly replacing them and buying them a new one. Just because they're not made very well, they are from China, and they're just really easy to destroy. So I do recommend if you're getting rats for the first time, either make them yourself or go to someone that makes good quality thick hammocks that take them a little longer to destroy because I was constantly having to buy them a new one and they liked it, they enjoyed it as you can see in the picture, but I did not enjoy having to buy one pretty much every other week. So moving on to my first ever YouTube video with rats. If you've watched this video, I apologise, it's so cringy, I hate watching it back. I'm not going to watch it now, I've took a screenshot and closed the video because I cannot bear to watch any of my early videos. But this is a screenshot and I don't know what's going on with the bedding. I have so many questions about why I thought this was a good idea and I'm going to break it down for you. So again, I've still got the paper based bedding in the whole base of the cage. I did find a picture of me buying like a cardboard bedding which you can see in this picture and I thought good I'm obviously changing it and changing up the base of the cage but for some reason I put this in the litter tray. I <laughs> Common sense and me now would say use the most absorbent bedding which is the paper base back to nature, put that into the litter tray and then use the loose bedding which is good for digging in the main part of the cage but apparently I missed the mark and I must have missed that part of the information because I've done it the other way around. I've got the cardboard bedding in the litter tray and still using the more expensive paper-based pellet bedding in the main part of the cage. But I must have changed it at some point because obviously I am where I am now and I don't do this anymore but I just want to know where I heard this information and then decided to do it the opposite way around. So here's another screenshot from that video. Again, the cage this is pretty soon after I got them. I've made a couple of changes. They've got a water bowl. They've also got the hanging foraging toy. And I've added like a rope bridge ladder thing, which is good. They could have done with a lot more things in the middle. There's not too much to do. I don't think I would be comfortable putting my boys now in this kind of cage long term. So I wish I could go back and change things, but I've definitely learned from this. I definitely add so many more things into the cage. They've also got two water bottles, which I didn't have in the first picture before I got them, so I've learned about providing them with different water sources. They've also got the water bowl just in case the bottles break or anything, which I'm always really paranoid about, so I've added that. Also looking at this screenshot, you might notice just how close it is to the window. I did move this if it was very, very sunny. I would move them and put them on the floor. This was in my uni accommodation. I had like a window seat near the window, which was the only real place I could put a rat cage. I did have a pretty good blackout blind, which was down pretty much all the time, but if it did get a bit too sunny, I would move them or I'd put them kind of under my desk, but I was very limited for space and that's kind of the reason they were in that spot so close to the window. Also, another reason I chose to go with this cage is because I was working with limited space. I only had that one space to fit a cage and the only real cage that would fit there dimension wise was this fur plus one, so that's the reason I went with it. Also because I did have to travel and go home, I needed a cage that could easily collapse 
when I went home for Christmas and things like that. So this page was good for that. It does collapse quite easily, pretty much down to like the size of the base, which you can then fit in the car really easily and last minute just take it down and transport it somewhere. So that's the reason I did go for the fur plast. I wouldn't use it again now that I have so much more space, but back then it did work for me and I did have to work with limited space for my wraps. And the one good thing about having this window seat is I often had the cage door open and then they would never really jump off and they had all of that space as well with like toys and things which you can't see in this picture but they also had that kind of added bit of the window seat as well. And then we have this screenshot of my food bowl, two pieces of pasta, super random. Also I was feeding uh, science selective pellets at this point and obviously I'm feeding them in a food bowl. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I'm big on enrichment for rats and one of the best ways to provide this is with their food and giving them a pellet food is very bland and very boring. They're not interacting with different textures and flavours and giving them a mix is much more enriching for them. I do now do that thankfully, but it did take me a while. I think it took me about a year or two years into owning rats to actually switch them to a mix just because I didn't have the space to store it, I probably could have found somewhere to get a small bag from rat rations or something, but I did feed them science selective. Thankfully, I never touched anything like the Pets at Home nuggets. I think there was kind of a bit of an overlap where I couldn't get the science selective, and I did use the Burgess nuggets, which are absolute trash. Um, but luckily, I did feed them one of the higher quality pellets, but I would not go back to feeding this. I like feeding them a mix, and I wish I'd done it sooner. Secondly, I did use a food bowl to begin with with my rats. I think it's so easy to assume that because dogs and cats get fed this way that every other animal should also be fed with a bowl, but it's so boring for them, it's not very enriching. I could have done so many other things like using foraging toys, like foraging wheels or even the little ball thing I had, or I could have also scatter fed, which granted the bedding I was using at the time would not have been very good for this, but it would have been a lot better than just giving it to them in a bowl. It probably would have just sat on the surface of the bedding, but they would have still had to try and seek it out and find it, which would have been a lot better. So that is pretty much it in terms of pictures and videos of my first ever rat care. I think one of my biggest mistakes and my biggest regrets is not considering what to do when one of my rats suddenly or starts to pass away. Scampi was just over a year old when he suddenly passed away overnight. I have no idea what happened to him, but I was not in that headspace of making decisions or having a backup if that happened. I hadn't even started to consider getting new rats. And then I was suddenly left with Rolo by himself, which is one of my biggest regrets. I think at that point I was just in kind of the new rat owner bubble. I was enjoying them so much, I loved them so much. But I didn't even want to touch on or think about them passing away, especially passing away at such a young age that I hadn't even considered the thought of having to get new rats. So when it did happen, I was left with such a massive weight of having to then suddenly scramble around, try and find other rats to go with Rolo. And I think he was alone for about a month, two months maximum. And I just felt so guilty that I'd not even considered it. But that's definitely taught me now to be a lot more prepared and plan ahead to get rats before they start passing away. And I think that would be one of my biggest pieces of advice to you guys if you're owning your first group or pair of rats. Please start planning ahead now rather than later. Just make sure you're not left with a single rat. If your rats are six months old or a year old, start trying to source other rats. Just make sure you're not left with one by themselves because unexpected things like this can happen. And Rollo did get pretty depressed. He was quite depressed while he was alone after Scamp died. Nothing I did, he was with me all day long, really helped him through that, so please make sure you're planning ahead just to avoid situations like this. But I think despite all of the tiny mistakes I made with my first two rats, I enjoyed them so much, I missed them so much. I had such a good bond with them just because we lived in such a confined space together. Obviously they were in my uni room at uni, and I was pretty much there when I wasn't in class and I always had the door open if I was at home and they would just go in and out if they wanted to and they could get down from the window seat, climb up my bed and come and sit with me whilst I did uni work. So we had such a good bond together and I miss them so much. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the mistakes I've made with my rats in the past. None of us are perfect, we all make mistakes. We've all got to grow and learn from where we were before and I'm definitely not perfect, I still make mistakes and still things I could improve with my rats. 
And I think as long as you're constantly learning and researching and making changes, that's the most important thing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to check out my Teespring store, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!